So we all see in these beautiful images of our universe, whether it's something an astrophotographer has taken like myself or the Hubble Space Telescope or JWST, the James Webb Space Telescope. But have you ever wondered how big are those things in the sky, really? Let's say our eyes could be just as good as a telescope. What would they look like on our night sky? So what you see here is a familiar view. This is just a tree tops roughly around 30 millimeter of focal length, which is what our eyes can see. And you can see the full moon rising just over the tree tops. This is a very familiar scene for what we're going to show next. Before we start answering these questions, let's have a look at our universe in a rough scale. So our planet orbits our sun, which is just one star out of billions that we have in our own galaxy, the Milky Way. And of course, there are billions of galaxies in the universe as well. The point is that we have something that is astronomically close to us, which is our Milky Way. And then there is something that is astronomically speaking far away from us, which are the other galaxies. So let's talk about our universe as our house or our neighborhood or our town or city. So our sun or our earth is our room. So if we were going to go to another planet within our own solar system, that would be, say, the equivalent of just going to another room. It's really, really close. We just get up and walk there. Let's say we just want to leave our house and leave our own solar system. It's the equivalent of going outside, just leaving the front door. The problem is that that's going to take us about 50 years. And we actually have a space probe that is out there which is Voyager 1, the first man-made object to actually leave our own solar system. Now let's say we want to visit a neighbor, maybe our closest neighbor or our closest neighboring star. Astronomically speaking, this is still really close. It's just our next door neighbor. But in reality, it would take us around 20,000 years to reach our neighbor. So even if it's close astronomically speaking, it's really, really far with the technology that we currently possess. In this example, let's say we live in a village. The village is full with houses, millions of houses actually, or billions of houses to be, to be more precise. And that is our Milky Way. That is our galaxy. Everything is still very close to us astronomically speaking. It's in the same town, but if we wanted to leave our town and just, just say we just wanted to take a walk and go to the furthest house that is out there, that is on the edge of our city or the edge of our galaxy, that would take us around 3 million years. But still, astronomically speaking, it's very close. So when we want to go a little bit further, let's say we want to visit our closest neighboring town, which is our closest neighboring galaxy. Now we're starting to talk about, astronomically speaking, we're starting to talk about a little bit greater distances, but still it's just the next town. It's not very far. So for astrophotographers, there are plenty of interesting things to look at in our own Milky Way, in our own galaxy. We have nebulas like star forming regions. We have planetary nebulas, exploding stars or stars that have exploded. We have a lot of beautiful globular star clusters, which is a collection of stars that surround our Milky Way. But astronomically speaking, it's not very far. So we can actually use a small telescope to photograph these things. I have two telescopes. I have this Red Cat 51, which is 250 millimeters of focal length. And I have this bigger one, the TS Optics. 115 800 which is 800 millimeters of focal length meaning that it can zoom in roughly three times further so of course i'm going to use the smaller scope for targets within our own milky way 
and I would probably use the bigger telescope for targets outside our Milky Way or if I wanted a little bit more detailed shot of something that is within our galaxy or that is something really really small. But enough about that, now you understand the scale of our universe and roughly how it works. So let's have a look at how big those things are in the sky. So first off we have this. This is the North America and Pelican Nebula together and it's a beautiful star forming region especially the area around the Cygnus wall and this photograph is taken with a wide field telescope uh, not the Red Cat 51 but my other lens that I used before that the Canon 200mm f2.8 so if we were placing this thing in the sky and we could see this with our own eyes as our telescope does it would look something like this. It's quite a big object. Next up is this one, the Elephant Trunk Nebula. This is also a star forming region, not too far from the previous target that I showed you guys. And it's quite big in our own scenery. It would have the size looking something like this. Moving along to another wide field target, but that is not within our own galaxy. It's actually one of our closest galactic members, the Andromeda Galaxy. This is also taken using a wide field telescope, cropped a little bit granted, but still. This galaxy is actually heading straight towards us. The Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy will collide eventually and it's going to be a magnificent show out in the sky but things move very slowly from our perspective. So it's going to take roughly 4.5 billion years for the Andromeda galaxy to reach us. And it's gonna take several billion years for the actual collision to happen. So this target will actually grow bigger and bigger in the night sky. But from our perspective in our lifetime, the size of it is around this big. Moving back to the Milky Way, our own galaxy, there is another very popular target, which is this one, the Rosette Nebula. This is a beautiful star forming region, and it's also taken with my wide field telescope, but I could take more detailed image of this one with my bigger scope. And if we were going to place this one in our scenery, it, the size of it is going to be around this big. So let's have a look at something that is a bit smaller, because these are more wide field targets. Let's have a look at a target that I photographed using the bigger scope, which is actually within our own Milky Way, and it's this one. This is the Monkey Head Nebula, and it's not a very big target. In our scenery, the size of it is about this big. And this nebula has actually been photographed by the Hubble Space Telescope and it imaged an interesting star forming region within this nebula and it took this image. And if we were going to compare the Hubble Space Telescope with my big, biggest telescope image of this monkey head nebula, you can see that the field of view or the zoom if you want of the Hubble Space Telescope is just a small portion of my image. So the focal length or the zoom is measured in distances and it's actually in millimeters. Our eyes can see at around 30 millimeters. I have a wide field scope which does around 200 millimeters and then my biggest is around 800 millimeters. Hubble Space Telescope is 57.8 meters and JWST, the James Webb Space Telescope, is 131 0.4 meters. Imagine the details that you can see with that telescope. Also, it images in infrared, something that we can't see with our own eyes. So you can understand why astrophotographers and astronomers are really excited about this space telescope. It gives images we've never seen before in details that nobody has ever seen before. So that's it for this video. I hope that you have enjoyed this one and if you have, do give it a like. And as usual, do let me know what you think in the comment section. And of course, if you want to see more of me, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. All right now, bye for now.